And Daddy just stood up. And it's like 7.30 in the morning. She's ready to leave. So, so I get up. It's been taking a little longer to get up today because it's been raining about 7 o'clock in the morning. So I have to get up. Slip one block over, came over here, milked right there. And they were grazing in this vacant lot right next to uh, the DMV. I think DMV or post office, one of the two. And <clears throat> we're waiting for a ride. Um, Paul is the name of the man, uh, the angel that, um, that I rehomed my last three sheep to. And uh, I kind of was um, impatient uh, with my situation and felt cornered um, into um, having to rehome all three um, of my white sheep, my uh, dairy sheep to him, um, because I had Dottie and then those three. and. Um, my mature ram in there um, had began getting uh, aggressive to where he couldn't be coupled with another ewe so therefore I couldn't walk them out of there um, off of our farm uh, that was selling it was up for sale so that was some added pressure and I didn't have the ability to walk off once it sold so I felt um, I wasn't able to walk off with two leashes and, uh, and two sheep on each end of that leash um, because Buddy would swing his horns into the side of the uh, the coupled sheep, whoever he, I coupled him with, and so yeah, it wasn't uh, wasn't working out. Being able to work walk off the property, and the property was going to sell supposedly, and it was for sale, and there's people looking at it. <clears throat> so um, yeah, I made the call. Uh, unfortunately, to that girl. Um, well, fortunately, no. <laughs> but uh, at the time, I, I felt a horrible remorse um, after having gone through it. But, um, yeah, I, I couldn't bring myself to just rehome one of my white sheep, which would have been Penny because she's far too big from my downsizing breeding program that I'm trying to create a miniature dairy sheep with. So, um, but she was also is the sheep that I had had the longest and she, so I didn't, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I thought it was going to come out easier. She doesn't like, uh, look at your face. Oh, as soon as those scabs come off, it's good. Yeah. You got the last scabs. No more, no more uh, boiling to get uh, rid of the, the vegetation that was jammed on the inside of your cheek. It got rid of it or dissolved it. So, um, anyway, back to the story. Um, it's been a kind of a long story, um, very complex, but very interesting. Um, so my ideal situation at the time would have been to be able to rehome my largest dairy sheep, Penny, and be able to walk, uh, my ram on his own leash, um, and, and then walk my other two ewes, um, coupled in the other hand on a leash. Um, however, I couldn't bring myself to do that because, um, uh, Penny would have been really, really, really sad, like heartbroken. And me just knowing that she was heartbroken for the rest of her life would have made me heartbroken for the rest of my life. Um, so I, then I considered um, rehoming. Um, unfortunately, uh, the next cut was really impossible for me to make because I wanted to use um, Buddy's dairy genetics to breed with the smaller dotty sheep here um, and the camo dotty sheep and the finer wool dotty sheep here to make a, uh, uh, a, a nicer breed, a nicer, smaller breed, and dairy breed. To make a nicer, smaller dairy breed, but, um, but at the same time, JC was like uh, already like my favorite. Anyway, long story short, I couldn't bring myself to decide between, um, um, between including Buddy uh, and JC, or JC. Long story short, I couldn't couldn't decide between 
including Buddy or JC. So, um, and I don't think that uh, the two that I would have rehomed would be nearly as happy as if um, as if I had uh, rehomed all three. So, I made the decision to um, put an ad up and rehome all three. <coughs> and Paul bought them, and he called me the other day, texted me and. Uh, text me a picture of JC's new Ram Lamb that I was super interested in holding out for but um, didn't feel that um, I would have the opportunity of finding a, as good of a home as Paul um, by the time that I needed to move or make a move so he called me uh, and texted me and showed me a picture of the new Ram Lamb and uh, I asked him if, uh, if they were going to be selling it uh, once weaned um, because they already had Buddy and this ram is uh, w uh, it's what they call line bred. I line bred um, Buddy, JC's son, um, back to his mom uh, and it's called line breeding. It's called inbreeding when you uh, when you breed sisters and brothers together. But line breeding is actually not frowned upon and at the same time it can create a smaller um, breed a smaller offspring so that's why I did that and so this ram lamb is supposed to be a little bit smaller but at the risk of being a little bit less health or a little more fragile which I can work with because I'm with him 24 7 but I need him to be a little bit more docile and weaker temperament so to speak so um yeah I asked him uh, if they would be selling it and if they if they were selling it how much for and, and I would be interested in, in purchasing so that I could start back up my flock um, because since I've, you know, sold them, I've not only felt remorse, but I've logically found so many things to be a mistake in getting rid of them. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to rebuild the flock and told them that. And he actually is so blessed with, uh, with so many sheep and, um, and he has Penny's, um, Penny and her offspring and buddy, uh, that he offered not only to give me JC's ram lamb, but he, he also offered to give me back JC so that she would be happier and I would be happier because um, she, she would be happy, you know, getting her, her lamb taken away. And uh, I, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I didn't know what to think. Um, I've been sleeping on it, praying on it for the last week, and I just can't believe that. Um, we came out to the coast for three reasons. To get away from the three main reasons. To get away from the smoke and get clean air. To check out the Oregon Coast Trail or the Pacific Coast Trail and see if it was viable for um, people to walk along with dairy goats or dairy sheep in the future, which it wasn't as soon as we saw. And the third thing was to map out the farm stands and the farmers markets and uh, the work trade farms um, all around southern Oregon. Um, so we came up the I-5 and then over from Roseburg to the coast and then we were going to go down from Coos Bay because uh, this is uh, typically recognized as the southern Oregon area. And I was going to try to put together a um, wine map like cartoon map that uh, would depict these three things and possibly more um, so that people could patron and help bolster these uh, local food uh, venues. That's the other thing that would be included would be farm to kitchen, actual farm to kitchen um, restaurants and food services, which I don't know, some people call themselves farmers table, but then um, it's just because they use vegetables seasonally from the farmers. But then there's other places that are like crowding stuff for year-round use, and they're incorporating local grain. Um, yeah. So this would this would document and detail and map out um, each of these four different. Um, food sustainability um, 
items. Anyway, so yeah, he offered to uh, to not only he offered to not only give me give me gift me the Ram Lamb, but also give me back JC, so that I uh, so that her Ram Lamb would be happy happiest and uh, she would be happiest and and uh, and I would continue to be able to stay in milk. Um, he not only offered these things, but then he continued to try to talk me into letting him come pick me up, uh, pick us up, and bring all three of um, the sheep and I uh, back down to Ashland. Um, and I, uh, at first, I uh, was reluctant, you know, I was trying to, um, but um, he's yeah, he, he, he is actually, was actually concerned, um, not overly, but, um, realistically, and it was like, it's just gonna get colder and wetter <laughs> really quick, um, and, yeah, he's right, and there is no purpose in, um, if the Oregon Coast Trail, um, had uh, worked out then, then I would have said that that would make a little bit more sense, but... Um, right as he was talking us out of this, uh, I found that the Oregon Coast Trail sucks, so uh, it kind of started to make sense, and then um, walking down the coast uh, to help map out the um, so local food map uh, wasn't really necessary either, because at the exact same time I visited the, um, the Coos Bay Farmer's Market, and for the first time, being on the coast, in three different cities, um, I received a pamphlet um, of a map called the Oregon Food Trail, and it's just the um, it's this exact same thing that um, I was looking to map out, except it's not as honest as uh, it needs to be, um, and it's only on the coast of Oregon, um, so the Southern Oregon. Um, local foods map or we'd call it so lo so local foods map would uh would include the entire um the entire southern oregon loop not just the coastal um lake of it and uh it also includes a bunch of supposed farm to table restaurants that are completely not and it does not include um it doesn't include um, work trade farms for people to um, work trade for, for food and for lodging so that they can skip around um, in between those patroning those other businesses um, or park their RV um, in exchange for work trading for an hour and then they skip on to the next um, to patron the next food venue local food venue um, but the point is that pamphlet is super helpful for, for filling in all the information that I or at least you know the majority of the information I assume it has if not all of it um, for the local food availability um, going down the coast so I don't need to go down the coast I don't need to go up the coast to get to him he's wanting to come pick us up and bring us all the way back down to Ashland so um, so that we can be, uh, we can be most happily positioned, and um, and through him offering that um, in the last week of us uh, of us uh, basically waiting around trying to figure out phone service and uh, and if if he's if we're going to catch a ride with him and what's actually going on, rescheduling our whole agenda, um, it's just come to make more and more sense um, because there's so many things that I could be doing down in Ashland um, right now um, and at the same time uh, since that uh, that week has surpassed uh, there's been a lot of things that have fallen into place people have called me there's a man named Lucas from the Seattle area offered me contract grazing job uh, with his um, couple hundred sheep uh, basically be uh, toting us around and dropping us off on properties and I'd be watching the sheep while they mowed and then he'd pick us up and in between those contract grazes um, I would be free to roam around 
uh, the Washington area um, and the logging roads uh, would be really nice uh, with my three sheep uh, here this next summer. So this Lucas guy is talking about um, he wants to come actually pick me up every summer and bring uh, me and my sheep up to um, the Seattle area to do this contract grazing for him. And uh, yeah, I uh, think that it makes sense to go down and tie up ends with those projects in Ashland uh, over the winter and then get ready for next summer being able to um, go work for that guy and have the space um, to bring my, my sheep um, and be with them all the time. And uh, by then they'll, uh, there'll be too many of them for me to walk outside of a farm anyway, so it'll be perfect to start working for someone that maybe I can uh, establish a, a paddock that I can um, extend my breeding program in um, and or earn some money to rent some pasture. Um, by the way, I, I think that, uh, that this is uh, best for everyone for me to have uh, JC, which is the smallest full dairy sheep that I have had, and then to have Dottie, which is a, a diminutive uh, dairy sheep. She's not the best producer, but she's smaller. Um, and I'm gonna breed her with her with her son. I'm gonna line breed her with her son once we get back. And he's a Shetland, half Shetland, half her. And so um, hopefully she'll have a U that is uh, would then be 25% Shetland and 75% uh, dairy and then um, it should be uh, significantly smaller and then I uh, could breed JC's new ram lamb with, with her and uh, make some of those be better dairy genetics back in and then whatever's produced off of that um, a boy or a girl I can line breed it with, uh, with the, the ram dad or the you mom and whatever comes off of that should be um significantly smaller um than Dottie over there but producing almost the same amount of milk and hopefully with cool camo and and eye patches that'd be awesome and really fine wool so this is what it, this is what is all just kind of i don't know been uh churned up and this is how this is what's um, this is what how it's looking to be settling. We'll see. Everything can be churned up again by new life events or information. <clears throat> this is the second best plum tree we found on this uh, summer's trip. It's like, mm. This one is in Coos Bay. And that one was right next to the Myrtle Point Farmstead on the southern end of Port Myrtle Point. It was coming in town. Got a farm stand slash store, country store on the right hand side. And they have a plum tree at the left end of that, of that business building. And I'd say that one's a little bit better than this one, but this one's really good. some really sweet apples right here too look how red there no that red color was pretty deceiving these are really tart daddy likes them there's a better apple tree right down the street that we had yesterday those are pretty good I'm gonna hold up oh my god finally they're daily dandelion greens Good sheep. Daily wild edible greens. Dandelion again. Ooh.